Praise God, day three, Christmas days, hallelujah. Leading up to, uh, to Christmas day, to the celebration or what we celebrate, the birth of Jesus, praise God. And so uh, I want you to dig on in with me into the word today. Let's think about Jesus. Let's think about the things that um, fill our hearts with joy at this time of year. Uh, I love Christmas time. I mean, I do, <laughs> over here in England, we've, uh, Pastor Jillian and I have gotten the name Mr. and Mrs. Christmas, <laughs> I think because I think we had the Christmas tree up first. We'd had decorations that were already going into the house. And I, I think it's just that Christmas time for us has always been a very special time. Um, we've always uh, hung out to get the uh, decorations up. We made it very special for our kids. We would go into the city, get Christmas decorations. We, uh, I remember early, early on, for the very first year that we bought a Christmas tree, um, which is as old as Matthew, as he likes to remind us. We bought it that first Christmas for him. Um, so there's, you know, there's wonderful memories that we have at Christmas time. And uh, so, you know, when, when we think about it, it's not just about the lights and about the presents and about uh, all of the atmosphere that, that those things produce. Although those things, the atmosphere is produced because of the focus that people have. And some people get all hung up on it. Some Christians don't like Christmas because it's too commercialized and all of those sorts of things. But but as I, I believe that there are lots of those elements that produce an atmosphere of joy, of generosity, of uh, family. And those are all good biblical things. So we don't want to ever just walk away from those things. Um, we certainly don't want to be all bar humbug, you know, and Scrooge about it and Grinch about it. <laughs> but, but we do want to be, as I said yesterday, the light of the world. And it's so important. And so I want us just to dig in for a couple of minutes into the scriptures as we've been reading through Luke chapter 1 and looking at different elements of this. And uh, let's go back to what we looked at yesterday. Remember, we talked about Mary and how amazing it was and really the shock uh, that it could have been and probably was to some degree for Mary to hear that she was going to be pregnant. Nothing like this has ever happened before. There's no even if, if Mary knew the Torah, if she'd studied uh, and probably she would have heard uh, and certainly on on uh, on Shabbat, she would have heard the different Bible stories and the Bible readings and so forth and so on. Possibly not highly studied in the Torah. It was mostly the men that did that. But she would have known and, and uh, understood. And there would have been never once would she have ever heard of a precedent of somebody, of a woman becoming pregnant by the Holy Spirit. We've got, she would have known the miracle stories of uh, uh, Abraham and Sarah, uh, of others that got pregnant, um, that, uh, that were, were, you know, wanting to be, wanting to have a child and so forth and, and would pray for and, and uh, you know, angels would show up and say that, you know, and so forth and so on. You'll be pregnant by this time next year and, and all that. But there was always, uh, there was always a man involved in that process. But in this one, there was no man involved. It, the seed could not be human seed. Jesus had to be born of the breath of God, of the spirit of God, of the seed of God, in the same way Adam was originally. Jesus had to become the last Adam. He had to have the seed of, of God in the same way the seed of God was breathed into the physical dirt uh, earthen vessel that Adam's body was. And God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, that breath, that seed of God, that spirit, the spirit of God became a spirit of man and he became a living being. And the same thing had to happen in the womb of Mary, the earthen vessel, that seed had to be breathed in by the Holy Spirit. So let's pick up on this story and see it here. And verse 33 says, Then the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High high will overshadow you like a shining cloud, the glory, the Shekinah glory. Really, uh, in fact, in, in, in essence, that presence and that glory of God that came upon Mary in that moment was, was somewhat similar to the Shekinah glory that came down and rested upon uh, what's called the mercy seat or the top of the Ark of the Covenant, which is very significant in, in, the, in the descriptive that, that's being given here. And so the holy, pure, sinless thing, offspring, 
which shall be born of you will be called the Son of God. Now, of course, Jesus all through his earthly life was called the Son of Man. He referred to himself as the Son of Man, not the Son of God, because he had to fulfill this as a man. Uh, uh, but the, the eternal essence of who Jesus was is the Son of God, in the same way that we now as born-again believers are sons of God. Not, that's not a masculine or feminine. That is a, a statement of sons of God, that we are of his, of his seed. And verse 36 says, And listen, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is now the sixth month with her who was called barren. Now listen to this. This is, this is what I want you to hear. And Pastor Paul Brady uh, has been zeroing in on this. The Lord really spoke to him clearly about some of these things. Verse 37, for with God, nothing is ever impossible. And no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. I, I want you to think about that for a moment. For with God, nothing, no thing is ever impossible. With God, no thing is ever impossible. With the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. The, the, the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. The glory of God, the Most High shall overshadow you. The Holy Spirit came on the scene. The breath of God came on the scene. The Ruach HaKodesh, the, the, the Spirit of God, came uh, on the scene. And, and because... Of his presence and his power, nothing is impossible. Now, when it's just done in the flesh, done in the soul, done out of intellect, out of emotion, things become limited because they're drawing from the natural surroundings of this limited realm. But when Holy Spirit comes on the scene, he comes and he brings the resource of heaven. And from that place, that is the limitless place that is the unlimited uh, all things are possible place and so again it says for with God nothing is ever impossible and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment isn't that wonderful isn't that powerful I want you to think about that right now I want you to think about your relationship with the Holy Spirit now, you may be watching this and you, you feel, well, I don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Are you born again? If the answer is no, then get born again. Receive the Lord right now. Do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead? If you do, you're halfway there. Can you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord? Would you, would you be willing to say, Jesus Christ, I make you my Lord right now? If you believe in your heart, if you believe that Jesus was risen from the dead, and you confess with your mouth, the oh Lord Jesus, you shall be saved, the scripture says. And if you prayed that prayer right now, you just stepped out of death into life. You just stepped out of a Christless eternity into a Christ-filled eternity in Jesus' name. Please let me know if you it, make a comment. If you, if you uh, did that just now, I'd love to know and be able to pray with you. But if you have made Jesus Christ your Lord, and you are born again, then you do have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You may just not have developed that. And so I want you, I want to pray for you right now that you would know to be filled, uh, filled uh, and continually filled. Be ye filled, continually filled with the Holy Spirit. Let him fill your life, fill your day, fill your thoughts. Hallelujah. The mind of Christ. Let the Holy Spirit become a very integral part and you be conscious of him all the time he's your helper he's your comfort he's your counselor he's the one who comes alongside you to defend you to intercede for you praise god hallelujah isn't this wonderful because with the holy spirit with god on the scene with god nothing is ever impossible and no word from god should be without power or impossible of fulfillment father i pray right now for every person watching this broadcast this, this Days of Christmas broadcast. Father, I pray right now that the very, very presence of the Holy Spirit would come very mightily 
and fill the very atmosphere of the room of, of every person that is watching right now. If the, if the person hasn't known you and has, has believed in their heart and confessed you as Lord right now and, and stepped out of darkness into light, then praise God. That's so wonderful. If somebody's watching this who has known you, who has called on you as Lord, who believes your resurrection and right now hasn't developed that relationship with Holy Spirit, I pray right now that there would be a kindling, an igniting of something very special in this moment, the beginning and continuation of a filling, an intimacy, a a purashna fando kule bestende, a a powerful relationship, an ongoing facilitation of God manifest in their lives. And I pray this now, and I pray for that increase, and I pray for that manifestation. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, have a wonderful day. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, sleep well. Praise God. And we'll see you again tomorrow for another part uh, of diving into Luke chapter 1 together as we approach this Christmas time. In Jesus' name, we love you. We bless you. Blessings. Bye-bye.